Would you like to write your blog posts, your articles, or even your book chapters quickly and easily? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become A Writer Today channel. Getting into a state of creative flow is fantastic if you're working on a creative project because it will help you reach an end goal for your blog posts, articles, and books even faster. In the excellent book, Flow, The Psychology of Happiness, the Hungarian-American psychologist, Mihai Csikszín Mihai, defines flow state as Concentration is so intense that no attention is left to think about anything irrelevant or to worry about problems. Self-consciousness disappears and the sense of time becomes distorted. Now the good thing is you don't need to become a scientist to tap into this mental state. Like many writers I found it's easy to get into a state of creative flow while writing a first draft, while editing your work or while engaged in other creative projects like podcasting or even working out. These days, I spend about an hour or two in pursuit of creative flow each morning. I usually listen to ambient music, more of that in a moment, so I don't get distracted. And I'm often happiest when I'm immersed on a single task like editing a manuscript. Because in this state of mind, seeing measurable progress towards an outcome that I can influence feels reassuring. Now, I'd love to be able to extend a state of creative flow throughout the entire day, but more than three or four hours in this state is tiring. Still, any writer can tap into flow state each morning or afternoon and work on their most important creative projects. Here's what happens when you get into flow state. Number one, you'll experience deep concentration. I'll never forget one Friday morning when I was 30 minutes into writing a chapter for a book. The writing was going well, but then somebody from my family came into the office where I was writing, that's this office here, walked up behind me and tapped me on the shoulder. Now I was wearing noise cancelling headphones at the time, so when they tapped me on the shoulder, I jumped up out of the chair in shock. And it actually took me a few minutes to calm back down and answer what the person was looking for and then get back down to writing. Because when you get into flow state, all sense of time and location can fade away. So expect these moments of deep concentration. And it can actually take a few minutes to transition from deep concentration to the real world and back again. The second thing that will happen is you'll find yourself pursuing more meaningful work. It's easy to fill a typical day with busy work other people's priorities, meetings, phone calls, last minute tasks, emails, social media, and the news. Are all of these tasks important? Some of them, perhaps, but are they all meaningful? Unlikely. On the other hand, when you're spending time writing or working in a state of creative flow, you're gonna just pick one task that's most important to you. So it could be writing your first draft, or it could be editing your book chapter, or figuring out a content plan for your site. You gotta work on this single task for an extended period. It's going to be something meaningful which will help you make measurable progress on your creative or on your writing goals. In other words, it's not going to be related to somebody else's priorities and it's not going to be needless busy work. Number three, you'll find that the act of creating starts to feel effortless. A few years ago, I was lucky enough to travel from Ireland where I live to Austin, Texas. It was for a mastermind and I was there to meet up with several other bloggers who are running similar sites to mine. Now, I actually went a day early because I wanted to see the city. One night I was bored, so I wandered downtown Austin, Texas and walked into a jazz bar. And I sat down and over a beer, I watched a local jazz ensemble play music. And I was struck by the sense of effortless joy on their faces. This to me was flow in action. Now, I'm not a musician, but I often also feel happiest when I'm immersed in one single task, like editing or writing or whatever it is. Because in this state, I can see measurable progress on whatever I'm working on. I'm focused on something that I enjoy. And it's also something where all sense of effort will fade away. So the next time you're out watching your favorite band, ask yourself, are they in flow state? And does that relate to how you write or how you create? So what do you need to get into flow state? The first thing you're going to need is zero interruptions. Now this could be hard to get, but here's the thing. Flow state demands your full attention. Because if you're writing or editing and you get distracted, it can take up to 23 minutes to get back into that deep state of creative flow. Now, I'm like many people, you know, part of a larger family and there are three small children in this family so the house can get quite noisy. So to get into a state of creative flow, I sometimes get up earlier in the morning before everybody else gets up or I sometimes use a pair of noise cancelling headphones like I talked about earlier on so I don't hear noisy distractions in the house. If you don't have a place where you can write, perhaps consider going somewhere where there are zero interruptions like a quiet coffee shop or the nearby library. All you need is an hour or two. 
The second thing that you're going to need is a hard but manageable creative task. So a couple of years ago, I worked as a copywriter for a British software company. It was my job to write social media posts for Facebook and Twitter. I got pretty good at it. I was able to write dozens of posts for Twitter in 20 or 30 minutes. People and the rest of the team were amazed by the amount of tweets that I was able to knock up quickly and easily. They thought it took me three or four hours to write them, but it actually only took me half an hour. And this often meant that I could finish work early. However, I was probably coasting because if you want to get into a state of creative flow, it's better to pick a harder but challenging task that you can accomplish and which will push you forward somewhat. So perhaps instead of trying to hit a target word count of 500 words, you could aim to hit a target word count of 1000 words. Or perhaps you could pick a different topic that you want to write about. Or perhaps you could even focus on a section of your book that you've been procrastinating about, but which you really need to get done. Because all of those tasks that are a little bit easier, you can knock them off in the afternoon when you have less physical, mental or creative energy. That brings me to the next thing that you're going to need to get into a state of creative flow. So if you want to concentrate for 30, 60, 90 or 120 minutes, you're going to need to be well rested. So it helps if you slept well, ate and you don't have major worries on your mind. Because peak performance in front of a blank page is also linked to your physical and mental health. Much like with meditation, it can take a few minutes for the mind to settle and for your external worries to fade. It's all but impossible to get into a state of creative flow if you're tired, if you're hungover, stressed, arguing with somebody or you just didn't sleep well the night before. Believe me, I've tried and failed miserably when I was in any of these states. So getting into a state of creative flow may mean going to bed earlier, watching your diet, and also just taking general better care of yourself. You're going to need an ability to focus for at least 30 minutes. The Pomodoro timer works fantastic for cultivating blocks of deep concentration. Basically, all you do is get a timer. You could use the one on your phone, but I don't recommend that because of the distractions that come with your phone. So just simply use an egg timer or, down or download one for your computer. Set it for 25 to 30 minutes and then just work on your single challenging creative project or task. For example, trying to hit a target work count. Then when the Pomodoro timer buzzes, take a short break for two or three minutes and then repeat for another 25 to 30 minutes. Stack four of these sessions up on top of each other. If you can do this for a couple of days, you'll naturally build a muscle for focusing on your work for extended periods. It's kind of like the weightlifter who goes to the gym. The first time they go to the gym, they might struggle to lift that barbell. But after several weeks of turning up, they'll find it much easier to add weight. If you want to get into a state of creative flow and get the most from this state, I suggest setting a clear creative goal for the next three months. Usually, I try to hit a creative goal every quarter. For example, trying to write a book or trying to edit a book or trying to publish a series of articles on my site or perhaps researching a new content website that I want to start. Now, three months works quite nicely because it's long enough to accomplish something, but not so far away that you're going to procrastinate about it. Then once you've set a goal for the next two or three months, you can simply break that down into smaller milestones that you're going to tick off month by month, week by week, and then day by day. And it's through breaking down these larger milestones into smaller ones that you can pick single challenging tasks to focus on during those blocks of creative flow each day. Next, you're going to need deep, effortless involvement. So ideally, whatever you're working on or creating or writing should feel immersive. So for example, if you're writing out a script for an online course that you want to record, you're probably not going to stop to check the time or to catch up with what's trending on Twitter. Similarly, shuffling the chair and looking out the window and getting up to brew more coffee every few minutes are signs of distraction rather than immersion. So if you feel rushed or under pressure too, that can also take away from that sense of deep effortless involvement. What I suggest is turn off distractions on your computer, put your phone in a different room, close down any unnecessary apps. And you can even go hardcore mode by using an app like Rescue Time or Freedom to block access to distracting websites. All of this will help you focus on one thing, your challenging creative project that you need to accomplish during these flow sessions. Next up, you're going to need control over your actions. A few years ago, I learned how to back squat at the gym. The gym instructor who taught me how to back squat explained that a lifter will rack the barbell and load it up with weights. And assuming their technique is good and they build up some strength, they'll either hit or miss the lift. If they can hit the lift, chances are the following week they can load more weights onto the barbell. But if they miss the lift, they should ideally reduce the number of weights on the barbell or try again or end the session in question. 
showing up consistently for your writing or your creative work is a little bit like the lifter training to back squat. Sure, you might miss one or two sessions, but if you still have a chance of accomplishing something during that given session, you're much more likely to progress. Now, I like writing because it gives me control over my actions. I can see whether I'm achieving a word count or a publication goal. It's me alone with the screen or the notepad or the blank page. It's up to me to hit that word count, nobody else. So when you're working on your creative projects, ensure it's something that you can actually accomplish within the given session or within the given week, month or quarter. Because if you can see yourself making meaningful progress, you're more likely to stick with it when it gets tough or when the weights get heavy. The last thing you're going to need is access to immediate feedback. So when your flow session ends or the timer sounds, review your progress. Did you work on your most important task without interruption? Or did you find yourself going onto Twitter, Facebook or Instagram? At the end of the week, ask yourself, did you hit your word count for the week? What days went well? What days didn't go so well? At the end of the month, ask yourself if you're hitting your publication goals. And at the end of the quarter or every two or three months, ask yourself if you're achieving your big creative goals. Keeping track of this information regularly will help you figure out what you should optimize, improve, and what you should stop doing. Here's how I do it. I like to use a Google Sheet to keep track of my word count during given writing sessions. I'll simply record how long I spent writing and how many word counts or how many words I produced and what I wrote. This is enough information to capture and it only takes a few seconds to do at the end of the day. And then I can total all of this up at the end of the week. Now, I also like to track how long I spend writing because some parts of writing projects like editing are less about word count and more about fixing something and spending a couple of hours working on something challenging. So it's best to have both metrics when you're looking for access to immediate feedback. Learning how to achieve flow state during the day is kind of like a game. It's one part art and it's one part science. All types of content creators and writers can use flow state to write more, to publish more, and to get paid for their work. With a little bit of practice and a little bit of rigor, you can dramatically improve the quality of your work, you can enjoy it more, and you can accomplish your big creative goals. And it all starts with setting yourself up for flow state. If you found this video helpful, please hit thumbs up. And if you wanna get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.